Thanks for checking out the video. If you're new to the channel and you enjoyed the content, please hit like, share, and subscribe. Hello, friends and students. Let's study the song, Ento Fun. This piece is in the meter of 4-4 four, four, and in the key of C major. We're going to learn the little guitar introduction that I'm playing finger style. Of course, there's a violin that goes with this. But we will just focus on the guitar in this part of the video. So let's begin. Uh, as I said, we're going to play finger style. So in measure one, uh, we have a bass line. It's good to think of this guitar part as having maybe two different parts. This bass line, C, D, E, G. Okay, and on top of that bass line, you have these upper voices moving uh, on the counter beat or the up beat. So here's the bass and then the upper voices. Bass and upper voices. Bass and then the upper voices. So I'm playing usually the bass with my thumb and the upper voices with finger I for index and M for uh, middle. So the first note is third finger, fifth string, third fret letter C. Then the upper voices played after that are the open first string and the first fret of the second string that's a uh, letter open E and the lower voice is C. So bass chord or bass upper voices. Now let's move to the open D string, open fourth string, and the upper voices are this simple bar with the first finger on string one and two at the first fret. The upper voice is C and the second voice, excuse me, the upper voice is F and the second voice is C. So that uh, beat two of measure one is D, and then the upper voices. Now, beat three, we're going to put the second finger on the fourth string at the second fret, that's our bass note, letter E, and the upper voices, if we start on the first string with the fourth finger at the third fret, and the second string is retaining that uh, first finger on the first fret on the second string, letter C. So we have this bass of E, and then the uh, dyad, or the upper voice is the little chord. So let's put together what we have so far. The first three beats of measure one. Three, four, one, two, three. Now, on beat four, we're going to move up the neck. I'm putting the first finger on the fourth string at the fifth fret. This is letter G. The upper voice is a uh, seventh fret of the first string with the fourth finger, letter B. And notice the second upper voice I have placed now on the third string at the seventh fret, letter D. So I'm bringing your attention to this because previously the upper voices have been grouped together on string one and two, and now the upper voices are split from uh, onto string one and three. In this case, I am a, uh, addressing that with my picking hand, or my right hand, by using the ring finger now, also known as A, this ring finger, this one, to play. Okay, so that's a little detail. That's measure one. Let me review a little bit in slow motion measure one. Three, four, one, two, three, four. All right, very good. Now, measure two. We have basically the shape of F. This F chord in the first position. We're gonna play the bass note on the fourth string. And now, allow the second string to ring open, excuse me, third string to ring open. That means it's not a perfect F chord. This finger has been removed. Second finger is removed to let the third string ring open. You hit the open third string, which is G and you hammer on to the third string with the second finger at the second fret, that makes it turn to letter A. So we have uh, three notes so far. Okay. Now 
after that we're going to play this little dyad or two note chord which is the remainder of that F chord here, the upper two voices on the first two strings. Uh, that's letter F on the first string and letter C on the second string. Played together though. So uh, measure two, from the F chord we have one E and a. Okay, now from there, we're effectively moving to a G chord, but it's this fingering that I am using. I guess you could call it a G5. So we're at this G chord with the first finger barring string one and two at the third fret. Notice I'm also playing the open third string. Now we're going to play this nice little melodic riff, which is uh, D, E, D, C. It's all on the second string, so we could say it's three, five, three, one. Now what I want you to notice is I'm playing it all with one attack of the right hand or the picking hand. So you play number three, you hammer to number five, you pull off to number three, and then you slide to number one. So four different notes, but you're only picking it one time. Now, while you play that little melodic phrase, you have to hit also the open third string letter G. Just to give it a little underlying supporting harmony. Makes it sound cooler. <laughs> okay, very good. So we've learned the first two measures. Uh, that's good because we'll learn one more measure and you basically have the whole thing just by putting it all together. But let's review now uh, measure one and two. Okay. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay? Now measure three. As I said, if we learn these first three measures, you basically got the whole thing. So measure three, the bass line is now descending. Uh, If you remember a moment ago, we were ascending. And now we are descending. So uh, there's your bass line, and then we'll put in some upper voices. So the first bass note is third finger, fifth string, third fret letter C. The upper voices were the same as we played them before with this uh, C bass note. That is the open first string and the first finger on the second string at the first fret letter C. The upper voice is E and the second uh, upper voice is C. Now the bass moves down to B. Then you play the upper voice uh, with the fourth finger on the second string, letter D, and also open G. So that's bass chord or uh, lower note played with the thumb and then the upper voices, the dyad, the two note chord played with middle and index finger. Now beat three of measure three. It's this A minor seven chord, but let's just play the open fifth string as the bass note, and the upper voices are uh, letter C on the second string with the first finger at the first fret, and there's the uh, third string open. Okay, so so far in measure three we have this one, two, three. Now beat four, move the third finger to the string number six at the third fret. That's letter G, and the upper voices are now open B and open G, or open second string and open third string. So this is measure three in slow motion. Three and four and one, two, three, four. Now, let's go to measure four. A lot of this will be familiar to us. If you remember a moment ago, we played. Now we're going to play something just a little bit different. You use that same F material from measure two, which was the bass, then hammering on string three, and then a, a, a dyad on string one and two. Excuse me. So like I said, that's F 
is the same as what we did in measure two. But now, instead of going up to C, or excuse me, up to G, I'm going to go to C. Doing C in this way. I suppose you can do these things different ways. And that's a good time to say if you need to change or edit some part of this uh, arrangement to suit your skill level or your way of playing guitar, this is fine. We can always do that as long as we have uh, good timing and a nice respect for the melody. And we're not just doing it to be lazy, we're doing it to make good music. So you can change things a little bit. All right, so back to the uh, progression. We're in measure four. We played that nice F uh, melody or riff from before. And we go to a C chord. Now, there's a cute little embellishment of the C chord, which uh, comes after that, which is to play the bass note, then three upper voices on string two, three, and four, and then a hammer on on string two. You're hammering from the fifth fret, which is accomplished by that bar there, of string number two, hammer from the fifth fret to the sixth fret with, I call it the fourth finger. Okay, so all of measure four will sound like this. All right, so that's the first four measures, and at this point you've basically learned the whole thing. What do I mean? Okay, measure five is the same as measure uh, two. All right, that's right. Measure six. I said that wrong. Measure five is the same as measure three. That's better, thank you. Okay, now measure six is the same as measure two. Okay, uh, measure seven is the same as measure uh, three. Right, measure eight is the same as measure four. I know this is getting a little tedious, but I want to walk you guys through this for those of you who don't read music, and then of course I'll put it all together. But uh, you're, you're encouraged and you're welcome to look at the tablature and the sheet music to review all of what I'm showing you in this video, or to learn more in the next section of the song, right? Because I'm only going to show you the first 14 measures, but of course everybody wants to learn more. You can... Uh, look at the sheet music I provide in this video to learn more. All right, so I believe we are in measure eight, and what I was saying is, once you've learned the first four measures, you can put that together to play the complete little introduction. There's one small variation, we'll get there in one second. So let's just continue our review. Measure eight is the same as measure four. Measure nine is the same as measure three. Measure 10, here's where there's a little variation. Now we expect to come this thing, which would make it just like measure two, but instead, and a lot of the time, just as a side note, these things are probably played by a second guitar player. But let's go ahead and throw this figure in and pretend we are playing both cards <laughs> in this case. All right, so we had this material that we recognized from both before, which norm, uh, previously was followed by this, but this time it's followed by this. Nice, yes, that's nice. So what we're doing is playing all of those notes. I am with my first finger on the second string at the eighth fret. It's a letter G. You play that G, slide it up a whole step or from number eight to number 10. Then you pop over to the first string, play number 10, and slide it down to number 8. Okay, and as I said before, I would think of that measure 10 as being the same as measure 2, just having different melodic conclusion. Measure 2 has this melodic conclusion. That's the melodic conclusion, D, E, D, C. And measure 10 has a different melodic conclusion. Okay, very good. Now measure 11, same as measure 1. Okay, and now 
measure 12, the same as measure 4. Okay, so it's a little bit longer video than I normally make for YouTube, but that's okay because this is a little bit more detailed, and I didn't even really go that heavy into what I'm doing with the right hand, but these things I think you will uh, learn by looking at the tab and watching the video, right? Okay, so we've played the whole uh, 12 measure introduction, and I want to say again, pay special attention to these first four measures. Measure one, measure two, measure three, and now measure four. Because basically that makes the whole thing. You can just put it together, add that one other alternative melodic material, or don't play that and it, it will be okay too, either way. All right, so now with these items, I hope you have the tools to study well and have fun.